to get over the past, you have to accept that the past is over. No matter how many times you revisit the past, analyze the past, regret the past, or sweat the past, you have to understand that it's over. What is up, my dear friends? My name is Tyler Joe Stratton, and I am your heartbreak recovery coach, teaching you how to create happiness after your heartbreak. And in today's quick podcast episode, we are coming to you today uh, talking about the eight ways to recover after leaving a toxic relationship. This is an important topic that we must all discuss because ideally, I feel like every relationship that ends, ends because of some toxicity, maybe not entirely every relationship, give me a break, come on now, I mean, ideally, a lot of them will end up leaving because of some toxicity. Now, some of them, granted, um, they lose their fire, they lose their passion, they lose their compassion, they lose their love, they lose their hope, they lose their future, they lose themselves. Um, but ideally, I want to talk to you today about eight ways in which you can begin to recover after leaving a toxic relationship. And listen, if you're struggling to create happiness after your heartbreak and to reclaim your life, like allowing yourself to get back into the grind of things, meaning feeling better at work, you know, feeling better in school, uh, being more focused, being more present with your family members and your, your kids and your friends and feeling like yourself again, you need to check out my new course where I teach you exactly how to create happiness after heartbreak, where I begin to teach you how to move on and let go and be able to understand the grieving process and understand that it's okay to face what you're currently facing, but ideally teaching you how to speed up your healing process. And if you want access to that, be sure to click the link below in the show notes, whether you're watching this on YouTube, listening to this on the podcast, or wherever you're at, make sure you check out the link below because that's where you will want to go. Now on to today's episode, eight ways to recover after leaving a toxic relationship. Number one, there is still grief involved with ending something that wasn't right for you. Ideally, you have to allow yourself some space to feel however it is you're currently feeling, whether that's sad or angry, confused. Maybe you are struggling to create any sense of hope, compassion, understanding. Well, whatever it is that you're feeling, you've got to understand after leaving a toxic relationship, you've got to allow yourself and you've got to embrace those feelings. You've got to feel it in order to heal it. And you've got to just learn how to sit with it and let whatever to flow to flow. Ideally, what I mean by this that I found rather helpful is anytime I feel a certain way, I don't judge it. I just allow it myself to feel it without judgment, without trying to fix anything. I just allow myself to sit with it. And that's ideally what you're going to want to do when it comes to trying to recover after leaving a toxic relationship. You need to feel it to heal it without judgment and without trying to fix anything. You're just like, Hey, I feel like shit. I feel like garbage. I don't feel good about myself. I don't feel good about the situation. I wish I had the answers, but I'm not here to try to fix it. I'm here just trying to create a better sense of peace in my life. So that's number one, understanding that there's still grief involved when ending something that you know that wasn't right for you. And you've got to be okay with that. Then you got to feel it to heal it. Number two, this is pretty ideal. You've got to surround yourself with the right people to remind you of your light. Are you currently doing that? Are you surrounding yourself or are you isolating yourself? Are you surrounding yourself by a good quality group of people that will raise your joy and remind you of the light in your heart? Or are you isolating yourself and just barely getting through the days? You wake up, you get ready, you might have a cup of coffee because that's the only thing that's energizing you right now. And uh, you take a shower, you get ready for work, and then you head to work, and then you have a grumpy day, and it's a bad day. You try to put on a positive face, but the positive face is just draining you because you know you're not truly positive. You deal with people that you don't want to deal with and you come back home and you go to bed basically to lay in bed or watch TV to watch Netflix to just waste another day away. Listen, this is not a dress rehearsal, my friend. My friend, this is not a dress rehearsal. We do not have another chance at this life. So you need to quicken your healing process so that you can begin to experience a happier quality of life day in and day out. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised next week. We're not promised next month or next year. We're not promised 
any time besides this current present moment. This is all that we get is this present moment right now. And I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to look back, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, feeling like you're living with regret in your heart. Ideally, that's the last place I'm trying to steer you down. So in breakups, reality can oftentimes get distorted and we become addicted to what hurts us in an attempt to seek redemption. Like there's so many times in my uh, heartbreak recovery uh, time when I was in my singleness that I just wanted to seek out revenge and, re and get redemption. So what I would do is I bury myself and identify myself with a, my hurt. Like I'm like, yeah, any conversation I had, I would talk about the breakup, any conversation, it, the breakup, eventually I became my identity. It's what was who I was and how I felt. And my entire life was wrapped around that truth. And if that's the same thing for you, understand that this is a slippery slope for going back toward the pain. So you've got to be sure you're not trying to navigate this heartbreak on your own and you need someone like myself or, you know, a friend or a family member, but ideally someone who's trained in this specific area to teach you how to, so that you teach you how to navigate these muddy waters so that you're not falling back so that you're not identifying with the pain so that you're not reclaim or claiming these um, disempowering statements like I am not good enough. I am not worthy. I am not lovable. I am, I will never attract someone of my hopes that will fulfill my dreams. I will never be the, uh, attract the right partner. I will never be enough, whatever it may be, but you cannot start to beat yourself down because the partner was not your partner. Okay. You've got to surround yourself. Number two is surrounding yourself with the right people to remind you of your light. That's, that's just what you got to do. Number three is a radical. You've got to take radical. And I mean, absolute radical self-care. Ideally, what this means is taking care of your physical, mental, and emotional needs. Do you have any idea what those currently are in your life? Do you understand what your physical needs are right now? Do you understand what your mental needs are? right now, or more importantly, what your emotional needs are. What do you need to feel? How do you need to feel? What thoughts do you need to think? And how do you want your body to respond to this heartbreak? A lot of people that I coach lose weight uh, unwillingly. A lot of people, you know, get sick, they get depressed, they, they lose hope, they, they can't seem to create any sort of hope, happiness or enjoyment in their daily life, because they're not taking care of themselves. They isolate themselves and they stop doing the simple things. It doesn't matter if it's like exercising, drinking water, eating healthy. It doesn't, they, self-care just goes right out the window. That is the worst time to stop your self-care practices and routines. And if you don't have one, this is the time to create one so that you can find yourself creating some healthy self-care practices. So I ask you to spend some time to get to know yourself and your emotional needs get curious about the discovery of your own heart. This will definitely help you create some happiness and peace in your life. Number four is to seek out the lesson. You know, ideally when it comes to seeking out the lesson, I think this is so powerful in our daily practice of personal growth and personal development and understanding how to create more joy in our life and in ourselves. We must understand what did we learn about how we value specific relationships. Like, what did you learn? I'm asking you specifically, what did you learn about what you value in your relationship? Do you even know the answer to that? If not, just spend some time. Come on, spend some time thinking about it. Pause this episode, pause this video. Understand what did you learn about what you valued in this relationship? Number two, what did you learn that you never will tolerate again? Seek out the lesson. Understand that maybe something that I will never tolerate again is if they cheat on me once, I will not go back to them. That's one role that I have with myself that I will never run away from. If I get cheated on once, I will end it there no matter what. I, it's not worth the suffering. I would rather be alone than to be, be suffering uh, in a relationship. Oh, uh, well, what about forgiveness? How you got to practice forgiveness? No, this is, listen, listen, this is my boundary. If you cheat, that means I wasn't enough or you're not feeling like you're enough and there's nothing I can do to, re to help you get through this time. I am not taking responsibility for your mess. If you are the one who've created this, I am not going back through that. That's what I did in my, in my past relationship is I tried to fix her, uh, who she was and her thoughts about cheating. And it just, listen, it just never worked for me. 
So seek out the lesson. Number five is make sure it never happens again. Ideally, one of my things that I make sure that I, I don't focus in on or I don't allow in my relationship, listen, if you're a cheater, how do I prevent that from ever happening again? If you cheat on me, I will not give you my forgiveness and I will respect myself to walk away. So that allows me to not allow myself to suffer any longer, okay? So this is something that, you know, you might need to get curious about why you were an energetic match to that dynamic in the first place. Like, why did I attract that, you know, quality of person um, into my life who ended up cheating on me? Why was I in an energetic match? And what I learned is that although I never cheated on her, I cheated on myself. And what I mean by that is I wasn't living in alignment to who I knew I was and could be. There's a lot of, a lot of the times when we're in challenging and tough relationships, we lose ourselves because we continue to stop doing what we know we want to do, or we stop being who we know we want to be in order to fulfill them. So we lose ourselves in them trying to please them and trying to perfect so we don't get lone, be lonely, get, be lost, be alone, whatever it might be. We lose ourselves in that relationship trying to please them. And that's something that I'll uh, make sure that never happens again. You know, so what within you needs to heal? You need to understand this. What within you needs to heal or evolve in order to never experience a toxic relationship again. Ideally, this is where you can look into your trauma bonds. This is where you can look into yourself. This is where you can understand like, why did I attract this lower quality person? What part of me am I not accepting of myself? And what part of me am I cheating on me with? Um, this will help you to understand uh, the reason why you get cheated on is because you attract what you are, not what you want. And I was a cheater, not on my relationship, but on myself. And ideally, that's why the cheating took place in my eyes. Number six is you've got to forgive yourself. Ah, this is a big one. Actually, I talk a lot about this inside my course on how you can begin to forgive yourself. Or I also talk about this in one of my last chapters in my book, The Big Three, where I teach you how to build joyful and loving relationships with yourself, others, and God. I teach you how to forgive. And that's so important. But for things... Uh, you need to forgive yourself for the things you allowed your, to happen to you. You need to forgive yourself for not leaving sooner. You need to forgive yourself uh, for not, you know, um, uh, sticking up for yourself. At the end of the day, you just need to understand that you did the best that you could. And that's just the way it is, you know, better now and you have more self-respect and so much more to offer. So continue to grow your respect for yourself. Continue to go beyond the initial burst you had when you finally left. You've got this. You can create happiness after this heartbreak or just feel better after this heartbreak. This heartbreak does not need to define you. You are so much more than a relationship. You need to not forget that. So practice on self-forgiveness. There's so many different exercises. Listen, if you're not a part of the Happy Heart Academy membership side of the program, be sure to check it out on a month-to-month -month basis. I give you so many different tools, techniques, and ideas on how you can practice forgiveness. Like if you're struggling, like, okay, how do I forgive myself? Well, come inside of the Happy Heart Academy on a month-to-month -month basis where you can learn how to start to cultivate and forgive yourself. There's so many videos on these different topics and lessons just like this. This is my free content. This is my podcast. This is my podcast to help you create happiness after your heartbreak. Now, number seven, if number six was about forgiving yourself, number seven has to be about forgiving them. It's a whole other topic, but understand that hurt people hurt people. But that doesn't, I'm not saying that because, um, you know, that doesn't make anything they did okay. But hating them just keeps you from love in the future. So you've got to learn how to forgive them. Surrender to the deeper level of love and learn how to let go. Love doesn't have conditions. And when you give someone freedom, you give it to yourself too. So once again, if you're struggling to forgive yourself and to forgive others, come inside the Happy Heart Academy, okay? This is the free side of the community. Come inside the paid side community. Invest in yourself. Invest in your healing. Invest in your happiness. This is the place where it begins. So definitely give it a try. And I believe that you will be able to create happiness after your heartbreak. And lastly, you've got to celebrate yourself. Number eight is all about celebrating yourself. You finally put yourself first and spoke up when most people don't. You know, you got out of the relationship that wasn't right for you. And that's something to celebrate. These are the eight ways to recover after leaving a toxic relationship. Number one, 
You've got to understand that you must feel your pain in order to heal your hurt. Number two, you have to surround yourself with the right people to remind you of your light. Number three is you got to do something with your radical self-care. You've got to practice radical self-care. Number four, seek out the lesson. Number five, make sure it never happens again. Number six, forgive yourself. Seven, forgive them. And number eight, celebrate yourself. My name is Tyler Joe Stratton. I am the founder of the Happy Heart Academy, as well as the author of my book, The Big Three, where I teach you how to build joyful and loving relationships with yourself, others, and God. And listen, if you're struggling to create happiness after your heartbreak and you need more help to reclaim your life back after a great loss, be sure to come join me inside the Academy. Check out the courses tab and enroll into the course that's going to teach you how to reclaim your life and your happiness after heartbreak. If that's something you want, if you want happiness after this heartbreak, this is the course that you need. 13 hours of video content, plus so much more coming your way. I am upgrading and updating the course on a consistent weekly basis. So you're going to be very enjoyed and almost overwhelmed by how much material there is on creating happiness after your heartbreak. But once again, if you want to live a joyful life. If you want to live fully and love more openly so that you don't go into your next relationship with a closed heart, check out my course where I teach you how you can begin to reclaim your life and your happiness after this heartbreak. Hope to see you on the inside.